everybody is looking for the holy grail of managing chronic pain. They don't want pain in their lives. I have a lot of thoughts. They are all good. Okay. The first is that I think in a long time of watching rehabilitation of the human being evolve mm -hmm. and our interest in the kinds of equipment, I believe that this is the first piece of legitimate, mm -hmm. medically based equipment for self-rehabilitation okay. that the health professions will have an opportunity to see and certainly that consumers can use. Right now, people who are injured or sick and recovering from injury and illness mm -hmm. have to go to a clinic or to a rehab facility or gymnasium with a coach, a trainer, etc., mm -hmm. to help direct how and what they're going to exercise and strengthen and look for mobility. Okay. This is a device that comes into the lives of those same individuals mm -hmm. and gives them the opportunity in their own homes at their own speed and pace, okay. the ability to begin to take control mm -hmm. of what that disease or injury has done to them. I am medically retired because of my back. I've had problems with my back. The minute I put it on and when I stood up, it was like, wow, it was like night and day. I couldn't believe it because I've been on this cane for a while and I walk with a limp and I have problems with my lower back where it's just constant pressure and pain. Mm -hmm. And I drag my left leg, but when I put it on, I just walk like I was walking in water. At 70, my biggest problem has been a lack of stability. I have osteoarthritis in my knees and I feel very unstable, especially going down steps or down hills. The MedPro I have learned has provided me with a lot of stability. Also, my wife indicated to me that through the use of the MedPro, uh, she actually thought my posture improved dramatically. I can guarantee that without the MedPro, when I walk, I have pain in the lower knee, but when I put the MedPro on, I immediately am pain free. As a former strength and conditioning coach for the Indiana Pacers and a 22 year veteran of personal training, I'm blown away by the versatility of the JBIT MedPro. Two quick case studies for you. Dick and Evelyn came to the pain-free clinic in Indianapolis. They had been in a head-on car crash in 2011. They had to be airlifted to the hospital. Steel rods inserted in their legs, broken vertebrae for Evelyn. For the last three years, they have not been able to alleviate the pain. They come to the clinic, they put on the device, and Evelyn is now able to walk up and down stairs pain-free. And then we have George Hill, other end of the spectrum, young, athletic, NBA basketball player. George uses this device in the off season to help strengthen his lower body. He uses it while he lunges, he uses it while he does squats, he uses it to alleviate the pressure on his knees for the rigors of the upcoming season. I feel like it's great. I feel like we can use this in a variety of different settings. Um, when I have a patient, whether it be an ACL repair, an MCL repair, uh, anything having to do with the knee or even the hip and, and ankle areas, one of the first concerns I have is to try to facilitate a good quad contraction, to try to uh, definitely make sure that they can use those muscles and stabilize with those muscles in the right form. Uh, the problem that I have with that is I generally get to spend an hour tops with that patient. Maybe half of that time is spent with therapeutic exercise, so we're doing maybe 30 to 50 repetitions of that exercise. Mm -hmm. This device allows you to do that on a continuous basis and, and really puts the rehab in, in the hands of the patient. I think it's going to change the way people do rehab in a lot of ways. Uh, for one thing, as I said before, it gives me the tools to be able to give the patient that he can do the rehab on his own. And that, that's really what we're trying to go towards is more preventative health care. We're trying to get patients in a mindset that they're taking their own steps to, to provide that positive reinforcement for therapy, whether it be uh, physical therapy, whether it be occupational therapy, whether it be other health related things, preventative medicine is really the, the direction that we're trying to go. The JBIT Med Pro is literally the most versatile piece of equipment in my physical therapy practice. I use it both as a resistive device and an unloading device. And when you take pressure and pain away from a joint, you're able to do things longer. So I put it on somebody and they say, well, you know, usually when I walk, I, I get pain when I walk at 10 minutes. Put the device on, they're able to do 15 minutes of work pain-free. And then we're adding more and more cardiovascular um, 
work with the device on. I typically prescribe the MedPro at the end of their therapy so that they continue to get added benefit once they're done. I also prescribe the Boost Rehab and Fitness program um, at discharge. So they, then they're getting that added education and added guidance. People get done with therapy, it's human nature, right? You go through a, a program and then you get done and then you kind of slack off and then you lose some of those benefits. If you get Boost and you get the JBIC Med Pro, you're going to continue to get those benefits. Now, I truly believe that every physical therapy clinic is going to have a JBIT Med Pro in their clinic. I've been dealing with knee pain since high school, but in the last three years, I've had the additional joint pain from onset of rheumatoid arthritis. I was hoping through physical therapy that I'd start doing stairs again without extreme pain. And with the JBIT, it just took it to the next level. It took the pain away from my joints to the point where I could do these things to get stronger. So we were approached by the MedPro team to collect 3D motion capture and force plate data with someone walking with and without the MedPro. Some of the initial data we looked at just looking at basics were the temporal spatial parameters. And those were the two that we looked at were step length and stride length. So in order to understand what a stride is, it's three complete steps. And it's from initial contact to initial contact on the same side. Um, so that includes three steps. We have one, two, three. So it would make sense then if someone's steps are shorter, their stride lengths are gonna be shorter. And when that happens, we start to see a chain reaction of events where we see a difference in the ankle angle, we then see a difference in the knee angle, and further up the chain as we go. Um, the difference we, we saw were um, the plantar flexor angle of the foot. So what we saw was normally when someone walks with a longer stride, they're going to have more of a pronounced heel strike. But when the uh, MedPro on, we saw that people were taking a shorter step. That means they had more of a plantar flexion. Their foot was already down and their body weight more over the foot at that initial contact, which then affects the moment at the knee. And that's the key because you know most people with osteoarthritis are gonna be complaining of knee pain. They're gonna have that compression or excessive stress at the knee joint. So by doing that, we, had, we saw a decrease in the extensor moment right after initial contact. And that's the point that we looked at and said that this device is helping to unload or take some of that stress off the quadriceps um, tendon as it goes across the knee.